I mean, I was never a heavy addict or anything. Never did heroin or meth. Tried crack cocaine once. That was, yeah. But I was only sober for 8 months between that and when Eddie, an old buddy of mine, introduced me to something called K3. Against my better judgement, I took him up on the offer. You heard of K2, bro, he said. He was already high. Spice, yeah. Synthetic weed. Well listen, man. I blinked. I looked at our mutual friend, Todd, then back at Ed. Listen. What? What? You said well listen, man, and then you spaced out. Oh, what were we talking about? K3. Oh, right, right. You heard of K2. Yes, I just said that. He leaned in close. Well, listen, man, this shit is like K2 and then some, hence the name K4. I thought you said it was K3. Todd stepped in. Okay, ignore him, he's gone. This isn't synthetic anything, Kev, it's something new. Then why did he call it K4? K3. Then why did he call it K3? He calls it that because the high reminds him of Bane on Spice or something. But this shit is like, on another level. And it ain't cannabinoid nothing. I shifted in my seat. Okay, I'm not. I mean you remember what happened last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I got you. Listen, though, I've done this shit four times already. Haven't had one bad trip yet. First trip I was just like, high off my ass. Nothing made sense. Second trip I was like an astronaut. Bro, I think I saw what exists outside the universe. Okay, what exists outside the universe? I said I saw it. Not that I remember it. But it was wild. I was warming up to the idea. How long does the high last? Depends on the hit. And the quality. He held up a small bag of pills. And you know me, man. I only get the best. Muffin, his dog, growled from the other side of the room. Muffin, hey, down, girl. Is she okay? She's fine, dude, he said. She's fine, dude, echoed Eddie. Then he started laughing. Is he on this stuff now? Took it right before you got here. I wanted someone to be sober enough to explain it to you. Thanks. Thank yourself, person, you blittering snarch, Eddie said. Then he resumed laughing. Thanks, Ed. Todd popped his pill in his mouth. I did the same. After a moment, he said, how you feeling? Me. Fine. How long does it take to kick in? He smiled. Should be feeling it momentarily, my dude. Muffin started growling again. Todd clapped. Once. Muffin. Shush, girl. Come on. I looked at her. She was standing in her crate, bearing teeth. The hair on her back stood on end. I don't think she's okay, man. She's fine. Eddie, you alright? I looked. Eddie was face down in the cushions of the couch. He wasn't laughing anymore. He was shivering. I said, are we gonna get cold or something? I usually don't, Todd said. Every hit's different and every person's different. All I know is it's fucking fun. Okay, Ed didn't look like he was having much fun. He doesn't look like he's having much fun, I said. Yeah, well, you know how your friends can be, sweetie, said my mom. I know, mom. What? I said I know, mom. I'm not your mother, said Pastor. Lewis. Oh, I said. Sorry. He leaned in from where Todd had been. He looked concerned, disappointed. Had his elbows on his knees. His hands clasped between them. Kevin, you know you shouldn't be doing this. I know. Especially after what happened last year. What were you thinking? Thought I could handle it, I guess. I stared at the floor. The way the colors on the carpet swirled in and out was always so mesmerizing. It's going to be a bad trip, you know. I looked up. Pastor Lewis had on that old evil smile he always had. Or did he? I furrowed my brow. What? It's going to be a bad trip, he said again in a deeper voice. Todd said all the trips he'd had were fun. That doesn't mean it's impossible to have a bad one. Oh, Pastor Lewis doesn't sound like that. Man, who the fuck is Pastor Lewis? Said Pastor Lewis in Todd's voice. I blinked. Todd was sitting there, looking at me like I'd lost my mind. I cleared my throat, but couldn't feel it. My old youth pastor from back in the day, I said. Muffin barked from her kennel. It was a deafening, alien-sounding bark. Gravelly, dark. I looked over at her. She looked at me. She barked again, but this time didn't open her snout to do so. Whoa, I said. What? Said Todd. He was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck. Cool how your dog can bark without moving her mouth. Can you sit down? You are weirding me out. Yeah, sorry, Pastor Lewis said before sitting down and becoming Todd. 
Then Todd said, laughing hysterically, I am sitting, man. He was indeed sitting. I looked up, nobody on the ceiling, and no indication that anyone had been. He was doubled over with laughter, howling aching laughs. He held his stomach. Is it that funny? It ain't that, Todd said. The spiders in your ears are singing. I smiled. Oh yes, what are they singing? Todd couldn't stop laughing long enough to respond. But he didn't mean to. I could hear it too. Dude, I said. It's the song from Snow White and the Seven Dwavers. Todd laughed even harder. Man, what? What? You spelled it wrong, my dude. What? Go back. You spelled dwarves wrong. It should be dwarves, not dwavers. What the fuck is a dwaver? I scrolled up. There it was. Dwavers. Huh. That's weird. Todd was still laughing. Far harder and longer than the situation warranted. How am I seeing words I spoke? I asked. I grabbed at the R in dwavers so I could rearrange the word. But the R slapped me just as Muffin barked again. Bark smack. Just like that. A single bark. Sounded like Satan. I sat back down. Easy there, Dwevers, I said. I'll just spell it right next time, damn. Make sure you do, said Muffin. One by one, the letters comprising the word, Dwevers headed out the kitchen window. Dude, I said. Todd, the letters are escaping. Stop the letters. Stop the letters. I can't hear you, bro, said Todd in Pastor Lewis' voice or Pastor Lewis and Todd's voice. Who are they again? Fuck. Whoever it was said, come downstairs. I am downstairs, I said, before stubbing my toe on his bedroom dresser. I took a step back. I was in his bedroom upstairs. Place was a wreck. That's, wait, how did I? Come downstairs, said Muffin, demonically. I couldn't see her, but somehow I just knew she was standing at the bottom of the stairs, on two legs, with her head upside down. You know when you just know a dog will look like that? It was one of those times. That's okay, I said. I like it up here. I pulled one of his dresser drawers out, dumped out all his underwear and condoms, and put it on my head for protection. No way you're getting me now, you bitch. I sat down on his bed, but his bed was on the other end of the room. Ouch, I said, sitting on his floor. Hurt my ass. Go downstairs, said Muffin. From so close behind me she must have been inside my head. Get out of my head, I said. The power of the dresser drawer compels you. He he was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck. Hey. He was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck. Stop it. He was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck. Stop repeating that sentence. What sentence? Said Todd. He was in his room. At least, I think he was. I don't know, man. I blinked again. He wasn't there. I could hear him laughing downstairs, hysterically. Holy shit. I could hear myself say. I sounded distant. Underwater. I am not in control right now. I started crawling towards the hallway, and he was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken as in. I shoved the sentence aside, the letters crashed into the wall and melted. I kept crawling, but now my hands were getting stuck in the quicksand. Shit, I said. Here we go. I made it to the door, but the dresser drawer on my head was too wide. I turned it the other way, the only possible solution to that problem, and went for the stairs. Downstairs Eddie, up and about yet again, was approaching Muffin's kennel, bent over, walking unnaturally, wide-eyed, mouth open, out of his mind. Muffin was howling and barking hysterically but also silently that's weird i said it's gonna be a bad trip said pastor lewis you already said that pastor lewis i'm asking why i can't hear muffin bark it's gonna be a bad trip he said again he was crawling on the ceiling looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck why is everything repeating i asked aloud he was crawling on the ceiling looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck why is everything repeating i asked aloud drink drink water water bro bro said said todd todd he handed handed me me a glass glass and i tried tried to to drink drink it upside upside down down the water spilled into the swirling vortex that was his floor oh man i said i lost the water where did you have it last sweetie said mom i looked at the empty glass i can't remember hey roy rogers what did i do with my water man did i eat it roy rogers didn't respond he was too busy floating on an upside down chair that was attached to the ceiling. Snarch, said his chair. Roy Rogers, who was also my Uncle Mo, tipped his hat. 
Let me know if you find it, I said. I could have sworn I had it H. Constant barking, screaming. It's gonna be a bad trip, you know. Why am I just now hearing Muffin barking? That was like an hour ago. I looked over. Eddie had picked up her kennel with her still inside and was holding it above his head. She was consumed in absolute and utter panic and he was trying to eat the entire crate. He unhinged his jaw to fit it inside, revealing exactly 14,543 razor sharp teeth the size of railroad spikes. Barking, Ed, stop. I heard myself say, I said. I squeezed my eyes shut and shook my head. Ed, stop. I heard myself say, why? His face was static. Like when you turn your TV to a channel you don't own. Ed, put her down and get that static off your face. He was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck. What? Eddie said. He dropped the kennel. Muffin yelped. I don't know, man. I said. Your face is all static. Like when you turn your TV to a channel you don't own. My face is static. Eddie said through the static. He started clawing at it. And who's crawling on the ceiling, looking down at you in a way that should have broken his neck? That sentence seemed out of place. I heard the words, but didn't see them coming from Eddie's mouth. In fact, Eddie wasn't even standing there anymore. He was in the kitchen, getting a knife. Shit, it's gonna be a bad trip, you know. Shut up, Pastor Lewis. I know that now. Eddie started swiping the knife in front of his face. Get off me, static. He said, get off me, static. I put the knife down. Ed, stand up. Wait, no. I stood up. Eddie knifed, putting the set down. Damn it. I stood up. Ed, put the knife down. There we go. It's gonna be a bad trip, you know. I turned around. Pastor Lewis was at the top of the stairs. But it wasn't Pastor Lewis. It was a perfectly black figure. Pastor Lewis, black is slimming on you. Come upstairs, said the figure. It didn't sound like Pastor Lewis anymore. But it did sound like static. Almost as if the static had formed itself into words. I can't. I have to save my friend from the static knife. Come upstairs, said the figure. Come upstairs. 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 Stairs. Stairs. Ceilings. He was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck. 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 Nark. Nark. Bark. Bark. Barking get off me. Static. Stat I see. Stat I see. Yo, who the fuck is Pastor Lewis? He was crawling on the ceiling, looking down at me in a way that should have broken his neck. Come upstairs dwarf sweetie it's gonna be a bad trip. You know no no no. I was falling. I realized. Falling. 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 And it was hot. Wherever this endless tunnel was it was dark and hot. That's a bad combination usually isn't it? I haven't been in many dark and hot places but having experienced it I can say I'd much rather be in bright cool places. Help me. I said. I fell to asphalt. Help me, I am falling. Now I saw lights coming on from the side of the pit. Come upstairs, said a single voice from behind me that was also Todd, Pastor Lewis, Eddie, and my mother at once. This isn't a bad trip, Kevin, the voice continued. It's real, and you know that. What you thought was real was the trip. Time, space, those are illusions. This is what exists behind the veil. This is the nothingness that exists outside the universe. This is the nothingness that awaits you at the end. No, falling. Get him to his feet. Come upstairs. And get that thing off his head. Come upstairs. Join the static. Bark. Are you okay? I blinked. Hey, kid, said the officer. You okay? I looked around. I was lying in the street. Concerned neighbors. Police cars everywhere. Most were in front of Eddie's house. Muffin whimpered in her crate next to me. What? What happened? While you're out here screaming I am falling. I am falling. No. With a dog kennel, a dresser drawer on your head, and no shoes. I was hoping you'd tell me. I think I was saving Muffin, I said. Who's Muffin? The dog. Yeah. Saving her from what? My friend was going to kill her, I think. Then he tried to cut his face off because it was all static. Holy shit. My now sober brain processed on sober words. Holy shit. That. That stuff was insane. Yeah, I'd say that's a fair assessment, dumbass. You're lucky you didn't jump off the roof. Can you stand? The officer helped me to my feet. I stumbled towards his car. Wait, I said. What happened to a, to Todd and Eddie? Are they okay? He looked at me. No, kid. They're not okay. This is why you don't fuck with this stuff. Now we have to clean up what's left. Sit there. He went off to talk to the other officers and the paramedics. Shit. Paramedics. Two gurneys. Ambulance. I. I came to a full 36 hours later in my own bed. 
As I later found out, Eddie did succeed in getting the static off of his face, along with the rest of his face, and the last I heard of Todd, he was in a straight jacket. Muffin was given to the shelter and then to another family, so there's some good news, at least. As for myself, I was told the effects might never wear off. I didn't believe them at first. I mean, who would? And how do you even process that kind of news? Fuck, I don't know. All I know is that the black figure is still standing at the end of my hallway, asking me to join it. I can still hear the static. Thank you to my super fans, Sweet Black Swan, Tacey, and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I look forward to making more content for everyone.